21, Global Climate Change. Climate and Geology. The climate system is a multidimensional system of many interacting parts, which include the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the geosphere, and the biosphere. Oh, and also the cryosphere, ice and snow. Okay, so, Earth's climate system okay, can be triggered by many, many different impacts or inputs here. There's the atmosphere-ice interactions, changes in solar inputs, changes in atmospheric circulation, changes in outgoing radiation, changes in, in amount of evapor evaporation and precipitation, changes in atmospheric composition, changes over cloud type, cloud cover, changes of ice-covered land, human influences like burn, burning stuff, land use, changes in ocean circulation, ocean atmosphere interaction, biosphere atmosphere interaction, um, cities, uh, changes in uh, sea, sea ice, and biosphere-atmosphere interactions. There's quite a lot of plate impacts or variables involved in climate systems. So the climate has a profound impact on many geologic processes, especially weathering, flooding, and mass wasting. Geologic processes also affect the climate, like volcanism and mountain building. Instru okay, how does climate change get detected? Well, instrumental recordings only go back a couple of centuries. Reconstructing past climate change is a field of paleoclimatology. Scientists use proxy data or indirect evidence of climate data often. C4 sediments is a storehouse of climate data. Abundance and types of organic remnants are indicative of past sea surface temperatures. Uh, foraminifera are indicator. Oxygen isotope analysis. Oxygen isotope analysis is a precise measurement of the ratio of eight, oxygen 18 to oxygen 16. Ratios are trapped in calcium carbonate shells and marine organisms. Ratios vary with the amount of sea ice and water temperature. Climate change recording glacial ice. Some ice cores represent over 200,000 years of climate history. Ice can be analyzed for oxygen isotope analysis, carbon dioxide and methane, air bubbles trapped in ice, dust, volcanic ash, and pollen. Here's uh, ice cores uh, stored and, uh, and show temperatures, uh, changes in temperature uh, for thousands of years before the present. Uh, tree rings are archives of environmental history. Growth rings are added each year. Thickness and density of the rings reflect environmental conditions. In certain regions, ring chronologies extend back thousands of years. So here's uh, some tree rings and uh, the, the widths um, um, give indicator of the conditions of the time. Other types of proxy data, fossil pollen. Pollen provides high resolution records of vegetation changes in a region. Type of regional vegetation is climate dependent. Corals, through oxygen isotope analysis, corals are used as paleothermometers and precipitation proxies, and also historical data. Other proxies, so here's more. Um, microbes, uh, sea surface temperatures, okay, and what vegetation grew where. Composition of the atmosphere. And so okay, so here comes some basics of the atmosphere. So composition of the atmosphere, air is mixed of many discrete gases. Clean, dry air, air is mostly nitrogen and oxygen. Carbon dioxide is a minute component of air, but can absorb heat and affect global climate change. Composition, okay, so here, most of our clean, dry air is 78% nitrogen about 21% oxygen, okay, uh, almost a percent argon, and only three, only uh, like like about four percent um, carbon dioxide, and about four percent of the rest is all the other gases we can find, like neon, helium, methane, krypton, and, and hydrogen. Okay, there's also water vapor in the atmosphere. Amounts varies from from no water vapor to four percent of air. Source of, it's a source of clouds and precipitation. Can absorb heat and also affect global climate. Ozone is a combination of three oxygen atoms and one molecule. Thin layer of gas concentrated in the stratosphere absorbs harmful ultraviolet radiation. Aerosols are tiny solid and liquid par par particles found in the air are called aerosols. They can attract moisture from cloud formation. They also can block sunlight from reaching the air. Okay, so here's a dust storm. Here's some air pollution. This, these are aerosols in the system. Extent and structure of the atmosphere. Pressure changes with height. Pressure is the weight of the air above. Pressure at higher alt altitudes is less. Average sea level pressure is one kilogram for, per centimeter, or 14.7 pounds per square inch. So here is a, a graph of, of air pressure, and it's 
and um, and when we're at sea level, the pressure is at its highest. And you see we're up at top of Mount Everest to be uh, much lower. Okay, 50% of the atmosphere lies below this line. Okay, it's about um, somewhere around six uh, kilometers or about five miles above above Earth above sea level. Earth's atmosphere is divided into four layers based on temperature. The troposphere, that is the bottom layer of the atmosphere. We live in the troposphere. Temperature decreases with an increase in altitude. Weather occurs in the troposphere. It's bounded on top by the troposphere. The stratosphere, temperature remains constant until about 20 kilometers, and it increases. The ozone is concentrated in the stratosphere. Bounded, this is bounded on top by the stratopause. Mesosphere, temperature decreases with height to the mesopause. Coldest temperature in the atmosphere are found in the mesosphere. The thermosphere contains only a tiny fraction of the atmosphere. Temperatures increase due to absorption of solar radiation. There's no defined upper limit. So here's our atmosphere. The troposphere is where all of our weather is in the troposphere. Okay, the temperature decreases as you go up. And then the break before we get to the next sphere is tropopause. So troposphere, tropopause. Then we're in the stratosphere. And in the stratosphere is where the ozone is. So the temperature stays about the same until after you cross the ozone, then it's going to warm up a bit. And then you have the stratopause, divides the stratosphere from the mesosphere. Okay, so in the mesosphere, the temperature drops again. And there's a mesopause, and we're in a thermosphere where things warm up. Uh, and the atmosphere just kind of peters out into open space. Energy from the sun. The sun emits electromagnetic radiation in the form of rays or waves. As an object absorbs radiation, molecular mo movement increases, causing temperatures to increase. The key difference amongst, among electromagnetic radiation is the wavelengths. Okay, so here are visible light spectrum. Here are these between red and violet are in that, are um, in this area, but with smaller, smaller wavelengths are your ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma waves. Our larger wavelengths were infrared, the microwaves, the short waves, the long radio waves. Okay. Basic laws govern radiation. All objects emit radiant energy. Hotter objects radiate more, radiate more total energy than do colder objects. The hotter the radiating body, the shorter the wavelength, the maximum radiation. Objects that are good absorbers of radiation are also good emitters as well. 50% of solar energy will pass through the atmosphere and is absorbed on, on Earth's surface. 20% is absorbed by clouds and atmospheric gases, including oxygen and ozone. 30% is reflected back to space by clouds, atmosphere, snow, and ice. Okay, so here, the solar radiation comes in. Half of it is absorbed by the land and sea. Okay, 20% um, is absorbed by atmosphere and clouds. 20% is reflected off the of clouds. 5% is reflected off of the land, and 5% is backscattered um, to space for the atmosphere. So heating the atmosphere, the greenhouse effect, short wave solar radiation passes through the atmosphere and heats the Earth. Long wave radiation emitted by the Earth is absorbed by gases in the atmosphere, such as carbon dioxide and water vapor. The long wave radiation heats the atmosphere, which radiates heat both out into space and back to Earth. The selective absorption and reheating of Earth is called the greenhouse effect. It results in the warming of the atmosphere. Okay. So in airless bodies like the moon, all incoming solar radiation uh, reaches the surface and then some is reflected back into space. The rest is is um, is radiated, is absorbed by the surface and re-radiated out. Uh, and on the Earth includes solar radiation. Some of it's absorbed by greenhouse gases and re-emitted. Uh, some some are and then then um, re-emitted back earthward. Okay. Bias with abundant greenhouse gases like Venus, um, major amounts of greenhouse warming, okay, and its temperature is like 941 um, degrees Fahrenheit. Plate movements and orbital variations, moving land masses. Land masses move closer or farther from the equator and change this climate. Moving land masses can affect ocean circulation, which then in turn changes climate. Variations in Earth orbit. Changes in eccentricity, obliquity, and precession cause fluctuations in disturbances or solar radiation. Volcanic activity and climate change. The effect of volcanic aerosols on climate. 1815 was the year without a summer due to Mount Tambora eruption. Volcanic ash and dust. Ash from Mount St. Helens 1980 eruption settled out of the atmosphere relatively quickly and negligible effects on global temperatures. 
Sulfuric acid droplets, 1982 eruption at El Chicon, released large amounts of sulfur dioxide, fine water vapor, and stratosphere produced sulfuric acid particles. Remains in the stratosphere for up to several years. Sulfuric acid droplets reflect solar radiation back into space, lower global temperatures by almost half a degree Celsius. Volcanic haze reduces sunlight, um, reduces sunlight at Earth's surface. Okay, so L after El Chicon, uh, we had less um, sunlight at Earth's surface the year following, and uh, same as after uh, Pinatobo. Volcanic activity and climate change again. Volcanism and global warming. Cretaceous period, one of the warmest in Earth's history. There's extensive volcanism. Lava plateaus formed, increased atmospheric carbon dioxide. Solar variability in climate. No long-term variations of solar intensity have been measured outside the atmosphere. The sunspot cycle. Sunspots are huge magnetic storms in the sun. They appear as dark spots in the sun. Sunspots reach a maximum every 11 years. The cycle is too short to have an effect on global temperatures. But here are some sunspots. And then, um, let's see, so certain black spots are, are sunspots. Um, and this um, um, shows some solar plasma and flowing magnetic field lines from these, from these storms. Humans have been modifying the environment for thousands of years. Ground cover has been altered by fire and overgrazing. Uh, results in modification of reflectivity, evaporation rates, and surface winds. Rising carbon dioxide levels. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Let's short wavelength solar radiation pass through to Earth, but traps long wavelength Earth re-radiating um, from passing back into space. Humans add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere and burning fossil fuels and deforestation. Carbon dioxide levels are highest in the past, the highest they have been in the past 600,000 years. Okay, so CO car, um, CO2 concentrations past 400,000 years. Okay, so uh, these are parts per million on this axis. Okay, and this is the highest. This line this is the highest they've ever been. Okay, until until right at some time after 1950, um, they just skyrocketed. Okay, so today is how we have more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than ever had been in the past, or at least the past 400,000 years. Atmosphere's response: global temperatures have increased. In response to increased atmospheric carbon dioxide, global temperatures have increased about eight tenths of a degree Celsius in the past century. The warmest 16 years since 1850 have occurred since 1995. Temperatures are expected to continue to increase in the future. The amount of increase depends on the amount of emitted greenhouse gases. Okay, so here's our temperature projections to the year 2100. So here's our, our global average, um, global surface warming. Okay, during the, during the 20th century, and then here, here's our predictions. These are different, um, different models. The predictions cite different curves of rate of global temperature increase. Okay. Role of trace gases. Methane is less abundant than gar carbon dioxide, but more effective at absorbing outgoing radiation. Nitrous oxide, greenhouse gas that lasts for 150 years in the atmosphere. And CFCs are commercially produced chemical that depletes the ozone. Methane and nitrous oxide. So here's methane, uh, nitrous oxide in parts per billion, and methane parts per, per billion here. And, and what years? So these are long term changes. And then, um, so they've skyrocketed in their trace amounts in recent years. Um, so then here, here we have still some more increase in methane and nitrous oxide over time. Now it's a very complex system with any components altered. Scientists must consider many possible outcomes. Different possible outcomes are called climate feedback mechanisms. Types of feedback mechanisms, changes that reinforce the initial change are called positive feedback mechanisms. For example, warmer temperatures at high latitudes cause sea ice to melt, which is replaced with a lower albedo ocean which increases solar radiation absorbed at Earth's surface, which then increases the temperature even more. So it's a positive feedback mechanism. So, so we have uh, reduced reflectivity, so decreased absorption of solar radiation, so warmer ocean, longer melt period, decline in the amount of ice cover, and it just keeps reinforcing itself. So it's a positive feedback mechanism. Negative feedback mechanisms produce results that are opposite the initial change and tend to offset it. So increase the global temperatures will increase evaporation. 
which increases cloud cover, which would reflect more solar radiation back into space, lowering global temperatures. Computer models of climate, important yet imperfect tools. General circulation models are based on fundamental uh, laws of physics and chemistry. They incorporate human and biological interactions, can predict climate change scenarios. Aerosols are tiny particles and drops of liquid, producing a cooling effect for reflecting sunlight back into space. The effect on today's climate is determined by the amount emitted over the course of a few weeks. By contrast, carbon dioxide remains for, for much longer spans and influences climate for many decades. Okay. So Human-generated aerosols, so source of these pollutants, coal-burning um, power plants, and agricultural burning and industrial processes. Okay. And so here is just some... some uh, aerosol index. So most of that aerosols were near the human population. Because the climate system is so complex, predicting specific regional changes relative to increased levels of CO2 is speculative. Magnitude of temperature increase is not globally uniform. Precipitation changes will also vary across the globe. Sea level rises were in 25 centimeters since 1870 will affect low-lying countries and regions with gently sloping shorelines, like the Atlantic coast of the United States. Sea level rise is driven by melting glaciers and thermal expansion. As ocean water warms up, the water is going to expand and the shoreline uh, slope shore and the um, shoreline rises. When slope is gentle, a small rise in sea level can cause a substantial shift of the shoreline. Original shoreline, shoreline sift. But if there was a more steep shoreline that, that where the shoreline shifts isn't so far inland. Changing Arctic, the Arctic sea ice, the amount of sea ice has declined by 13% since 1979. Permafrost, thawing permafrost is a positive feedback mechanism. Organic material stored in permafrost will start to decay and release more carbon dioxide and methane. Okay, here's Arctic sea ice, here's this between 1979 to 2000, the median minimum. But the minimum amount of sea ice in 2012 was all the way in here. Increased ocean acidity, when ocean atmospheric carbon dioxide dissolves in seawater, the ocean becomes acidic and makes it harder for calcite secreting marine organisms to grow hard parts. That affects our corals. Potential for surprises. Okay, due to the complexity of Earth's climate system, we may expect relative sudden unexpected changes or see some aspects of climate shift in an unexpected manner. Constant state of change is very likely.